Okay, uh, we're going to continue this conversation right now for more on what's next for the president and the U.S. Uh, uh, MCA. A vote later this morning. Want to bring into this conversation uh, Senator Kevin Kramer. Good morning to you, Senator. Good morning. Good to be with you. Uh, good to be with you. Uh, you have been uh, an advocate of this plan. Um, I saw that you were congratulating uh, the president uh, on on uh, on this particular deal. What do you think it does to the larger U.S.-China trade talk? Well, first of all, I think it creates momentum, and, and I don't think you can underestimate the value of momentum. Uh, good things follow good things. Uh, this phase one part of the, of the deal is very good for my state of North Dakota because we're an agrarian state. We produce a lot of energy, and we produce a lot of food and fiber, and uh, there are a lot of people who eat and consume in, in China. So this is very, very good for, um, for the Midwest and particularly for, for states like North Dakota. The other thing it does, I think, Andrew, that, that sometimes we don't talk enough about, and that is it creates momentum uh, you know, for the next trade deal, whether it's with the United Kingdom post-Brexit, whether it's with the European Union. Every trade deal that we accomplish creates momentum and leverage for our president in dealing with other countries. Uh, Senator, one of the questions uh, we've been trying to handicap this morning is uh, the impeachment uh, yeah. that took place uh, yesterday. The markets seem to be shrugging it off. <laughs> What do you think the larger implications are politically over the next year? So it's an interesting question, Andrew, because I think the markets are actually a pretty good reflection of the public. And that is that they baked in that it was going to happen. I think they've also baked in that when the adults in the, on the other side of the Capitol here in the United States Senate take control of this situation, we'll be able to restore some order. Uh, I think that, that the markets and the, and the voters and the citizens, the investors, uh, the worker have all baked all of that in and have a great deal of confidence. And I, that's why I think it's a bit of a yawner, as serious as it is, and I don't mean to diminish it. It's obviously historic, uh, even as flawed as it is. But, um, you know, I, I, think, I think it's going to be a very good year for the United States. Senator, how confident are you in, in what you just touched on, that the other side of the aisle does come to the table now, especially leading into the elections, where President Trump has called them the do-nothing Democrats. Are they forced to the table, to the negotiation table, and we start to really see substantive policy changes? Well, it's a great point because obviously when Democrats control the, the House, Republicans, the Senate, and the, and the White House, everybody wants to win re-election to at least maintain that. So you would think that there's a political incentive even for Speaker Pelosi. I think there's, I, frankly, I think much of, of what's happening with the USMCA today is a result of what's happened yesterday with um, impeachment. In other words, I think Speaker Pelosi, she's wanted an off-ramp off of impeachment since before it began. But she has this, you know, this radical, rambunctious group that insisted upon it. I think the, the payoff for that, for the moderates, is that, you know, let's do this trade deal. Let's try to and make it look a little more progressive. And they did that. Um, and so I, I think the give and take is, is played out right in front of us in the last two days in a rather dramatic fashion. Hopefully, we can do it in a less dramatic fashion next year. But there's really no stopping the momentum, I don't believe, of this economy, which is going to be very difficult for Democrats to run against President Trump with. Senator, uh, to that end, we were trying to also handicap how this plays in 2020 in terms of what the impeachment does. Yeah. Does it fire up the base on the Republican side? Absolutely. Does it fire up potentially the Democratic base? Absolutely. But what does it do to the independents in the middle? Yeah, so great point, because you're exactly right. I don't think you, in my lifetime anyway, I haven't seen both the bases this ginned up in a long time. So we're going to probably see record turnout. Who that benefits is hard to say. It is the independent, though, that in most elections makes the final decision. And independents are frustrated, rightfully so, by the process that they saw play out in the House of Representatives, which is why it's so important, I believe, for the Senate to not only have a fair and full process, but one that looks fair and full. In other words, the people have to have confidence restored in our Congress. Otherwise, we're going to see an impeachment, you know, every four to eight years in this country if, if we don't restore the, the higher standard. So you're exactly right. It's the independence, and not just, you know, nationwide, but in those swing states, and certainly, obviously, in those, um, you know, those electoral states like places like Ohio and Michigan and, and uh, Indiana and Pennsylvania, uh, they're the ones that are going to make this, uh, they're going to make this final decision. But then you have the individual congressional districts around the country where, you know, we often hear about the 31 Democrats and Trump uh, districts. I think it's closer to 50 Democrats and Trump or leaning Trump districts in a, in a wave year like this could be that are in jeopardy. And I suspect they're going to be working very hard to, to try to restore their reputation. Senator Kramer, 2020 is going to be a referendum on a lot of things. Uh, we appreciate uh, your time and perspective this morning. Happy holidays. My pleasure. Merry Christmas.